here at the legal department, we are constantly looking at sometimes the same problem through each team's perspective. It's exciting because we almost get something new to do every week. day-to-day -day of an attorney or of a compliance manager or anybody in the legal industry, it's kind of hard to visualize. Let's assume it's a Monday and we've had a weekend full of legal updates perhaps. You know, the first kind of portion of my day, maybe the first hour, will be addressing those updates, taking a look at, at what happened over the weekend, what do we need to kind of address in our operations this week, and just trying to be as proactive as we can. You know, after that, I'll, I'll kind of take two to three hours to do high-level thinking tasks, conferring with outside counsel for very niche matters like intellectual property or um, filing for corporate governance. And then I'll do my cross-department and team interviews and meetings and, and whatnot, kind of through lunch. And then afterwards, a big chunk of my day is used for looking at contracts, looking at our paperwork, helping the teams push their goals, push their operations towards that finish line and using my legal education, using my experience to kind of help them maintain compliance as they do that. At the very end of the day, I'll probably save that for research and development, what's on the horizon, what's going to come. That's a major, major part of what I do is being very nimble and having to kind of forecast what's on the horizon. Compliance efforts in general are just it's essentially a company's response to the legal requirements set forth by federal and state law. Compliance isn't just crucial to ensure the uninterrupted flow of operations for LeafWell, but more importantly, it's crucial for the uninterrupted provision of services to the state marijuana program patients that you know we help and that we serve through our platform in, in a number of jurisdictions across the United States. So compliance is really at the heartbeat of what we do because without it, we wouldn't be able to do what LeafWell does best and that's help these patients meet and, and attain the best medical outcomes possible that they can. A really fun part about my job is just kind of meeting and discussing policy, laws, potentially like best standards of practice with other professionals, accountants, lawyers, you know, even doctors that are in the medical field. It's so interesting to me meeting these seasoned professionals in this new kind of budding, no pun intended, but this growing space. And these professionals come from, you know, storied, long tenured um, careers in adjacent spaces. So kind of getting their perspective on the Wild West, that is cannabis law, standards of practice for cannabis patients, telehealth accessibility. It's extremely, now I wouldn't necessarily say like entertaining and fun, but it's super insightful. And for me, it's fun to kind of get these multiple perspectives. I'm extremely hopeful that the DEA will have a very productive review session in its efforts to hopefully reclassify marijuana as a Schedule III controlled substance under the Controlled Substance Act. I think what that action would do and what it could potentially do um, for patients, for medical professionals, for legal professionals, for financial professionals in this cannabis space is begin a reform movement towards more standard practice, standard policies, uniformity and consistency, something where patients can expect that in interstate healthcare law. If we want medical marijuana to be a, a pillar of, of that space as well, we need to bring them into the fold. And I think that'll all start with the DEA's action this year. So fingers crossed, I'm very, very hopeful for that one. It's not very easy to kind of pinpoint a date, 
and even a period at times. Uh, that's just the nature of dealing with bureaucracy and, and kind of the, this slower moving legislative process. Um, however, I will say that many governors and many leaders within the, the, the state and at the state level have been urging the Biden administration to essentially corral the DEA and kind of get them focused on their rescheduling efforts. Now the DEA has begun review. I would say on a personal level, I'd be very disappointed if they haven't kind of finished the review by the end of 2024. It being an election year, that might throw uh, a wrench into their, their, their plans, but you know, I'm hopeful to, to see this rescheduling effort go through by the end of this year, and, and if not, hopefully by Q1 or Q2 of 2025. Many, many misconceptions because the law is constantly evolving. One thing I will say is I will condition this um, response with, you know, obviously check your local and state laws. Um, this isn't legal advice, but one thing I've really noticed that's interesting that many medical patients kind of seem to be confused about and inadvertently get wrong sometimes is in their assumptions that, hey, you know, I, I have this valid state program recommendation, a certification, if you will, for medical marijuana. And I got it from a state licensed healthcare provider, a physician. But I don't have any workplace protections, or maybe I do, and I'm confused about that. Well, in many state programs, those recommendations don't necessarily rise to the level of a prescription because of the DEA's federal classification of marijuana as a um, class one controlled substance. So where some prescription medications are afforded such workplace and employment protections, obviously the recommendation doesn't amount to the level of a prescription and that's where a lot of patients end up getting confused and perhaps, you know, maybe not getting the job opportunities or getting unjustly fired because of these drug tests that they otherwise maybe wouldn't have had to take had they had that prescription. I would say good luck. You're going to need it and you're going to need to be determined. However, we need people like you in the legal industry and in the cannabis industry. People with um, the right purpose and the right why. So that's my biggest piece of advice is before you jump into this space, whether it be legal or cannabis or both, I think you'll find that when you've kind of found your why, your purpose, your passion and it aligns with the career choice that it doesn't feel like work as much as it is something that you're passionate about, something that you take personal pride and interest in. If your head's in the right place and you're a determined individual, we need more people like you in this space. And I heavily encourage you to come in and join the party because it's the wild west out here. We could use some company.